Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to interpret the regression coefficient estimate re results of a log level regression. So suppose that we have the following model that we wish to interpret the results of. So here we have log wage um, is our dependent variable, so our response variable. It's a function of um, an intercept here, so it's just a single number in the front, um, plus beta 1 times education plus beta 2 times experience, plus beta 3 times age, and then our error term. So now suppose this model, um, let's say we've gathered a fair amount of data, we've ran the regression, and we get the following uh, regression estimate results. Um, first off, keep in mind that none of these are real. They're just completely made up by me. So don't take them at face value, but uh, what we are going to focus on is how to interpret them if they were our results. Um, first off, these are results that are pretty typical looking from uh, uh, an R regression output. So we have our intercept here standing in for beta 1. So this value here is our beta 1 value, so our beta not value. Uh, the term next education in our regression results is our stand in for beta 1 here, so we get 0.33. Um, standing in for beta 2 um, is our experience regression coefficient estimate, so uh, 0 0.12. Uh, and then next to age, we have uh, 0 0.04 um, there. Now, how would we interpret something like this value for beta 1 of 0 0.33? Um, before we get into that, we have to get kind of uh, across just a few assumptions um, that are required um, before we can make any. Um, uh, you know, interpretation of our uh, regression coefficient estimates. So the first one is our, that our gas cost Markov assumptions hold. Uh, so there's, you know, several of these. Um, and in fact, we could still sometimes interpret our results if we relax these assumptions a little bit. But for the sake of this, let's as assume that those gas gauss Markov assumptions hold. I think there's like four or five or six, depending on how they're broken down. Um, next up, we need to assume that our coefficients are statistically significant and practically significant. So regarding statistically efficient, how do we statistically significant? How do we know that? Well, we look at um, our t-value and p-values here. So we have super low p-values um, for each of our regression coefficient estimates. So then we know that they're statistically significant. In terms of practical significance, that's a bit more um, qualitative. Um, so for practical significance, um, practical significance is basically does that regression coefficient estimate, you know, is it big in a way that, uh, uh, yeah, again, it's qualitative. So uh, I guess is the effect size noticeably big? Maybe that's practical significance. Um, given the underlying variation, the variable you're concerned with, is the coefficient estimate large enough to have an effect that you might notice in the real world? Uh, and then lastly, you know, we hold all the other variables constant when we're interpreting a single uh, regression coefficient. So when we say interpret beta 1 here, we're assuming that the experience and age are all, all um, also held constant. So giving those, you know, holding those assumptions, uh, let's interpret beta 1. So beta 1 definitely is going to tell us something about the effect of education on wages, but exactly how is it doing that? Um, so to correctly interpret this, what we're going to do is um, we're going to take the differential of our model with respect to education. So that's what we're going to do here. So here's our basic model, log wages equals beta naught plus beta 1 times education plus beta 2 times experience plus beta 3 times age. So taking the differential with respect to education, we get uh, d wage um, over wage is equal to the change in education times beta 1. Uh, and then kind of rearranging stuff, we get the following, we get, actually, hold on, let's look at this. Um, so D wage there is the change in wage, and the D education is the change in education. So um, D wage over wage is the change in wages in percent. So what's interesting about that is if you times this term by 100, so if you take that times 100, um, you'll get the percent change in wages. So if that thing that I've highlighted times 100 is the percent change in wages. So that's a useful statistic. So let's times both the sides here by 100. Uh, and we get the following. We get this 100 times D wage over wage, which again, this here is the percent change in wage, is equal to 100 times the change in education times beta naught. Okay, 
almost there, kind of reinterpreting this in uh, hopefully language we can both understand a little bit more. We get the percent change in wages is equal to 100 times the change in wage, sorry, the 100 times the change in education times beta 1. So what is beta 1 here? Uh, what exactly does it mean? Um, it means that if we increase education by one unit, we expect wages to increase by 100 times beta 1%. So with beta 1 equal to 0.33 here, that means that if education were increased by one unit, so that's one year, education increases and decreases by units of years, we expect wages to increase by 33%. So to correctly interpret this, we need to be aware of a couple things. So first of all, we need to be aware of what the units are of changes in education. Uh, and then we also need to know obviously what beta, beta 1 is. So what this says again is that a one-year one increase in education, we expect to increase wages by 33%. We can also interpret experience here. So once again, assuming these, these kind of big assumptions here hold, uh, we expect a one-year increase in experience, since experience is uh, here recorded in uh, units of years. Uh, one-year increase in experience, we expect to increase wages by 12%. And then age, uh, this data happens to record age and years. So a one year increase in one's age, we expect to increase wages by 4%. Great, hopefully that was helpful. If it was helpful, uh, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up and uh, thanks and have a good day, bye.